Hi there everybody, it's Mr. Builder here with you again today, and today we're doing yet another tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is not to do with redstone, despite the average of my other tutorials. This tutorial is for my multiplayer server that I run on Minecraft. A couple of my users have had questions about one of the plugins we use, one of my favorite plugins, a plugin called Shopkeepers. If you have any curiosities or questions about the plugin that aren't answered in this video, you can check out the Bucket Dev page, which I'll link to below. It has tons of information on it, it's fantastically helpful. And if you're interested in joining our server or finding out more information, also check out our website below and you'll be able to see if you're interested in joining and fill out a recruitment form or just come into the server as a guest and talk with us and we'll be happy to help you get in. So today, like I say, we're going to be talking about shopkeepers. The point of shopkeepers is an alternative to plugins like Essentials, uh, Sign Shops, and similar plugins. The big thing that I like about this plugin as compared to uh, Essential Sign Shops and similar plugins is that it allows us to have a tactile item-based economy rather than a virtual currency economy. And the problem with virtual currency economies is they just don't feel very Minecrafty because Minecraft is all about real items and physical existence. It's not really about the virtual world so much. And so I've utilized this plugin to kind of create that sense in, in our server as well. So, the plugin is fantastic, but just so you do know at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to be going through the setup or administrative configuration for any of this plugin. I'm going to be going through how to create an administrative shop and how to create the multiple kinds of user shops. So, <clears throat> let's kind of just jump right into it. The first thing I'm going to notify you about is please avoid doing this ever in creative mode. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you do the administrative shops in creative mode because they are just a command based creation, but if you try to do the user based shops in creative mode it will actually end up spawning a villager instead of spawning the AI nullified shopkeeper. I'll kind of explain that. Um, basically how this works is that it creates a villager with customizable trades who has no AI and so he just stands there looking at you like a dopey idiot, but he's got all your trades which is fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through the creation of an administrative shop right now. Administrative shops are super easy. All you do, point at the square you want the guy to stand on, type slash shopkeepers. Or shopkeeper, sorry, plural or singular works, technically shopkeeper is the correct. Uh, usage. Now once you've got a shopkeeper created this really doesn't do anything because you can see if I try to trade with him he's got diddly. So the way this works is you actually have to customize the trades manually and you do this by shift which is your crouch or uh, sneak whatever you want to call it right click on that guy on the uh, I don't want to call him a villager because they're kind of villagers with their brains scooped out. So you right click on your village with his brain scooped out and you get this menu which looks a lot like a small chest but there's a couple things on the right side that aren't quite in the ordinary. Um, for anybody who uses mods like these you might be familiar with the kind of concept that's flowing here. The way it works is the block of emerald up at the top which is this guy here saves your progress with this villager so if you've made any changes clicking that will save. There is an option in the administrative configuration that allows for auto saving when you exit when you're completed um, your progress with a villager, which is enabled on our server but isn't necessarily enabled on every server. So if it's not enabled on your server, it's best just to save to keep good habit. The block of wool here actually allows us to change the color of our villagers. Now note that this is within a limitation. It allows, allows you to cycle through the existing villager colors and it does include the unused green villager. So we'll go through and I'll just show you these quickly. We have wool, which is the uh, white wool, which is the white. We've got magenta, which is going to be the magenta, very obviously. Gray is the blacksmith. Um, whoops, wrong block. Uh, light gray is going to be the butcher, if I remember that correctly. And lime is going to be that unused green color, which you can't get naturally with the villagers, at least in this version. So I'm going to go ahead and use the lime wool. It's my favorite, personally. So we've got our nice creepy green villager. And now we need to actually set it up so that he can do something with the players, because right now all he can do is stare at me with his brain scooped out eyes. So we're going to, going to set up a couple trades. Administrative shops are the easiest shops to um, create trades in. The user shops require a little extra tinkering and a little extra understanding of how the mechanic works. But these guys, nice and easy, straightforward administrators, you can get your shop set up overnight. Not even overnight, five minutes. 
So the way this works is that these shot these slots, each of these represents a trade. Each of these rows, each slot represents a specific slot within the trade. The way it works is the top slot represents the left trade uh, slot in the trade. The bottom slot here represents the right slot in the trade. So this slot here is this slot here, and vice versa for the bottom one being the big slot at the end. So when we're modifying our trade, how this works is if we want to sell somebody something, we need to ask them to give us emeralds. So that needs to be in the left side of the trade, and the item that they're going to get in return for it will be on the right side of the trade. Vice versa, if we want people to sell things to us, we would do the opposite. Now, on our server, we use a conversion system of one emerald to 45 gold nuggets, and we use emeralds and gold nuggets like dollars and cents. So there are, you know, our bills and our coins, basically. So for us, we could do something like one emerald and five gold nuggets gets you a piece of blue wool. However, we can't do that in the opposite. We can't say that giving us two pieces of blue wool will give you an emerald and two gold nuggets, because what will happen, as you'll see in the trade, is when we go over to the other trade, it's two and two on the same side. So I would have to give him two pieces of wool and two gold nuggets to get that emerald. So keep in mind that you can only offer one item in exchange for a maximum of two different kinds of items. Of course, you can offer a stack of items in exchange for any size stack of items and two individual stacks or two stacks that are identical. So I could ask for two stacks of 64 blue wool to get that one emerald if I wanted to. Oh, and sorry, I didn't cover it. Uh, this obviously deletes the villager. If you didn't figure that out by now, it should be pretty obvious. You burn him. So, the administrator shop, that's really all there is to it. Uh, a couple of extra things, obviously, or I guess really only one extra thing. You can sell written books in these guys, and I guess it's not obvious, but it is a very cool feature. So I'm going to say, for five gold nuggets, you can buy my beautiful story. So I've got this story here, and the five gold nuggets. You can read The NeverEnding Story by myself. What you need to do, again, remember, left side of the trade, I want the gold nuggets, they want the book. So left is what I want, right is what they want. So they're going to give me the five gold nuggets for the book. So you can see here that trade is available. This actually allows a bottomless pit of that book to be distributed to your players. Uh, any amount of people can purchase it, and it will never run out of stock, and it's always written the same. So it's always written the same and signed by you. It's very cool to have that feature. We use it for little things like offering conversion uh, rates, uh, charter of conversion rates on our server for different materials. So now that I'm kind of done with this guy, I'm going to take my materials back because he does not deserve them with his little scooped out brain look, and I'm going to delete him. And we're going to move on to user shops. Oh! Sorry, one thing I want to point out before we move on to user shops, because I totally forgot about this. The nice thing about these guys is that I can push his fat little butt around, and he will actually eventually pop back into his square. Of course, he's going to refuse to do it because I have video running, but he will eventually pop back. Oh, there he goes. I pushed him out again, though. Sorry about that, buddy. Uh, he won't always end up in the dead center of the square, but he'll always be nearby and always be clickable from the adjacent squares. The added advantage is that they cannot be killed by players. They can only be destroyed by the person who created them, which means there's not going to be griefing of shops or anything like that. So, now let's get rid of him. I built him just to burn him. That's the way it is. That's the way it works. The world's tough. Deal with it, kid. So now, what I'd like to do is move on to user shops. And it's at this point that I have to stress again, do not be in creative mode to do this. I've never tested with adventure mode. It might work, it might not. I would just recommend survival. That's your best bet. So the way this works is a little bit different, and it requires a few more pieces. Since you can't just use a command, and I would recommend disabling the command for your players because slash shopkeeper always creates a bottomless shop, so I would recommend disabling that for anybody who's not op or even higher uh, administrative levels for people you trust. The way this works is that uh, villager eggs will now spawn shopkeepers instead of villagers. If somebody wants to spawn a villager, they need to be given creative or you need to spawn it in creative for them. Spawning these guys in creative will just spawn standard villagers. However, outside of creative, if you right click, how did it create a shopkeeper? I didn't click a chest, you weirdo. Anyways, it's supposed to be the case that, here we go, if you right click on the ground, I guess I had a chest still selected, it will tell you that you need to right click a chest before placing your shopkeeper. So the way this works is you place a single or a double chest and you right click it with your egg to place your shopkeeper. Before you do that though, what you want to do is select the right kind of shopkeeper. And I apologize for jumbling that a little bit. 
and I'm sorry if it's confusing. The way it works is just aim to a block that you can't reach and right click. You'll change the type of shopkeeper that you have selected. There are four kinds. As you can see, there's book, buying, trading, and normal. Book pretty obviously sells books. Uh, buying and tr uh, selling pretty obviously they buy and sell. Trader, he trades. I'll explain the difference between buy and sell and traders in a few minutes here. All right, so we're going to start off with a normal shopkeeper. And the way this works is you simply right click on the chest you want the villager to be attached to. This is where his stock will come from. And then you right click on the block you want him to be standing on. Once you've placed the shopkeeper, simply step up to him, hold shift or your crouch or sneak or whatever you want to call it, and right click him same as before. Now what you're going to notice though is that when you try to move something up into the inventory slot here, so I want to sell my 64 blue wool, oh, it drops it right back in. And no matter what I do, no matter how sneaky I try to be, split it in half and try to shift click it and jump it up there and it'll just come back. This is because you can't actually modify what's available directly in the villager when using a user shop. You actually modify it through the chest. So we open the chest and place our stock inside. Once we've placed our stock inside with the sales shopkeeper, we can shift right click and we get this screen. The, any items that are available in our chest, up to eight individual or eight unique items can be in your chest, and each of them will have two slime balls underneath. As you can see, I will add chests to his sale roster. And you can see that this happens. The reason it does this is that slime balls or sorry, slime balls by default are the null currency. That means that there's no price applied to those items. Generally, as a default, the currencies are emeralds and emerald blocks. And we changed it to be emeralds and emeralds. We were originally going to do emeralds and gold nuggets to fit with our currencies, but unfortunately there's a few variabilities that kind of don't work together really well, and we're still working out those problems. So we've just less left it as emeralds and emeralds. So what you do is you actually left click on the slime ball and it'll set the price to an emerald. I don't want the price to be an emerald, I want the price to be two emeralds. And so I'll left click again to set the price to two emeralds. If I make a mistake and accidentally set it to three emeralds, right clicking will reduce the price. If I wanted to set it to 12 emeralds, shift left clicking will jump up by an interval of 10. By the opposition, shift right clicking will do the exact opposite. Now, if you have a secondary currency, you can apply it using this slot here. As I said, ours are emeralds and emeralds. So I'm going to set my prices on both of these. I'm going to set them both to one emerald. And we'll go in here, one emerald for one chest, one emerald for one wool isn't quite right. I wanted them to get two chests for an emerald and ten wool for an emerald. The way to do this is really simple. Increase it the same way you would increase the emeralds. Just increase the wool to ten and increase the chest to 2 using your left and right click and your shift left and right click. What you need to keep in mind is that this will only uh, allow you to sell that number as long as you have that many in stock. So if you have 9 blue wool in stock, you won't be able to sell that deal. That deal will either disappear or not function. So now when I right click on them, I can see, ah, here we go, 1 emerald, 2 chests, 1 emerald, 10 blue wool. So that's exactly how you set up uh, that kind of shopkeeper. It's really, really simple and all of the shopkeepers kind of follow suit, but we'll go over them because there are slight differences for each of the different kinds. So I'm going to delete our friend here because I don't like him very much, and it's going to return an egg to me if that's set in the server's configuration. Some servers may not. I'm going to pull the items out of his chest, and we're going to go out here and change to the book shopkeeper. Now that we have the book shopkeeper selected, we're going to be able to sell a written book just like the administrative shop could. So I'm going to right-click on the chest, right-click where I want him, and as with the sales or as with the selling shopkeeper, you need to put the stock into the chest. The catch here is that he can't just sell a book. He needs blank books to copy to. So there always must be a stock of book and quill available in the chest. Now that we've got the stock in the chest, along with the written writable books, we can set a price. Notice that no items will appear in the trade until a price is set. This applies across all villagers. So we'll apply a price of one emerald. Now people can buy this book as long as there are blank books to copy it onto in stock for one emerald. Simple as that, it's very similar to the other villagers as I said. Now we'll go on to the next kind which is the uh, buying villager I believe. Yep, buying shopkeeper. So we're going to do the same steps, we're going to right click the chest we wish to attach him to, we're going to right click the ground we want him to be on, and we're going to figure out how to load his chest up. 
So this guy is a little bit unique in how you load his chest. You only need to load a single template item for any items you want to buy. So remember that this is me buying items from the players. So I want to be able to buy blue wool, I want to be able to buy chests, and I want to be able to buy book and quill. Now that I've applied all of those, I can access my villager and say I will pay one emerald for a book and quill, I will pay one emerald for chest, I will pay two emeralds for a stack of blue wool. And I want five, I want to get uh, five chests. I can't obviously do the book and quill because that's not a stackable item. It has to be a stackable item to stack it in here. So now that I've done that, I should right click and there's no sales. This is a problem that I ran across a few times, took me a little while to figure it out, but it's really quite simple. The problem is there's no currency in here. I've offered emeralds for these items, but I have no emeralds to give. So as far as this guy is concerned, I'm out of stock of what I'm offering. So I need to have a stock of emeralds. As soon as I do that, the trades will appear. Simple as that. You always need to have a stock of whatever your currency is in the chest available. Simple as that. So we're going to pull these out and I'm going to delete this guy because he is now useless. And we're going to go on to the last and my personal favorite kind of shopkeeper, the trading shopkeeper. I like the trading shopkeeper because they're very, very versatile compared to the other shopkeepers who are limited by the particular, by the particular type of currency set on the server. So same application, we right click the chest, we right click the block we want them on. Same application we put, oops, same application we take and we put the items we want in the chest, I want chests, I want, uh, let's say, villager eggs. And we shift right click. Now this is kind of cool, the way this works is we do apply the currencies in here like we would with the other villagers, but we need to be carrying the kind of currency we want to trade in. So for uh, chests, a chest isn't really worth an emerald, that's worth way less. I want to charge 10 gold nuggets. Now I can take this stack of gold nuggets and drop it in here, but it will set the currency to 64. It sets the currency to whatever the stack size is. So the easiest and quickest method is to preset your stack size that you want. I want 10 gold nuggets for that. I want 25 gold nuggets for a stack of wool. And I want one emerald for an egg. So I'll put the emerald in. It'll duplicate it so I don't lose my item. And it will do that every time. So when I put this in, it will duplicate the 25 so I keep it. And it will duplicate the 10 so I keep it. And then, of course, increasing the items here works the same way. Now that I've got that set up, all the trades are available. The cool thing about the shopkeeper is, as you can see in this case, the shopkeeper is acting exactly like a seller. He's selling these items for those prices. But the cool thing is that without having to change the shopkeeper type, I can put emeralds in there and take out a couple of these eggs and I can say I will also give you eggs for emeralds so I'll do the trade both ways I can simply plop that in just like that and now both of those trades are available in here so I can do either or and that's why I like the trader more that uh, versatility of being able to use different kinds of currencies and the versatility of being able to sell and buy at the same time now of course the trader can't do books he can't do written books that's his real drawback in terms of versatility the book shopkeeper is required for that because he's latched, latched into the book api if you guys have any questions or any concerns please feel free to comment below or to message me over youtube and i'd be happy to help you guys figure out any difficulties you're having to the best of my ability Again, please check out our website for our server below if you're interested in joining the server, or check out the dev bucket below for the actual plugin. It's a fantastic plugin, a lot of fun, and it offers a little bit of a uniquity to your server. Thanks for tuning in, and this has been Mr. Builder.